Hello, and welcome to the fourth episode of the Play Stamp Here Show. My name is Greg, and I'm your host. This is the third installment of our album fill series, where we're covering all the self-adhesive stamps put out by the United States Postal Service from 1974 to 2022 and beyond. Today's episode, we're going to be focusing on the stamps that are dated 1996. There's about 31 of them, and two of them came out in 1997, but they say 1996 on them, so that's how I'm sorting these. So basically with this album fill series, there's going to be about three parts to each episode. The first part is usually going to be kind of short because I'm going to play it in like 4x speed or whatever. It's just me sorting the stamps by design. And then I'm going to take those and I'm going to select a good sample of those to try to soak off of paper if they're not already off paper. Everyone knows self-adhesive stamps are a little tougher to get off paper. So we're going to be trying a few different methods uh, right now because those stamps still have that, that sandwich of the, the thin little layer of water activated gum in between the stamp and the self adhesive or the pressure sensitive adhesive. Hopefully most of them will come off in cold water. And if they don't, we will be using some various different chemicals and household cleaners to try to get them off of the paper. Then the third part is just me putting the stamps into my album, which doesn't take very long. If you're keeping score at home, that first episode we had about 24 stamps from 1974 to 1994, and we had all of those. We had 24 of 24, and then the last episode there was about 22 designs that said 1995 on them, and we only had 12 of the 22. So if you'd like a visual aid and kind of keep score at home, we are 36 out of 46 for 74 through 95, uh, about 78 percent. That's a that's a C plus. It's not something to brag about, but it's not something to be ashamed of either. So, and of the 3,200 or so self adhesive stamps to date, we're at like 1%, but we just got started. Hopefully today we have a majority of those 31 designs that say 1996 on them. Hope you enjoy this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you can think of some ways I could streamline this process, let me know in the comments below. I appreciate the feedback and, and I hope you enjoy the show. So now we're doing 1996. This is episode four and episode three of the album fill series. Now there are more designs this time. Last time there's only 12 designs and about 25 stamps. And we didn't have a lot of those coils, but this one has about 25 designs and there are about 32 um, Scott numbers in here. So there's only one jukebox here. That'll go in the book. Bulk rate stamp is going to go in the book. Yeah, so we're going to put that one in the book. It's the only tail fin one, so we're going to put that one in the book. Automobile bulk rate. I think there is a couple varieties of this mountain stamp. You can see that blue 96, and then there's a smaller purple 96 on it. But on here, you can see the plate block or the plate number coil the numbers on there yeah i don't have the, the mountain one that's too bad and obviously i only have one copy of these we're we'll putting those in this one's a little bit tap a little bit i do have three of these it's already off paper so i'm just gonna leave that be Put that one in my... so this one has Perfs on all four sides. We're gonna try to get that one off paper. I'm gonna copy of the Utah stamp. No, I don't think this is self adhesive. Nope. It's embarrassing. I'm gonna soak this one because it's got the four four sides on there. I'm gonna go in the extra pile. 
Get one of these ZTM stamps so that. Hmm. This one has a line through it. And the 32, see that white streak? That could just be a scratch. I'm going to look that up. But in the meantime, I'm going to put this one in the album. This guy has perfs on all four sides. We're going to soak that off paper. So we're going with this guy right here. He's got the four sided perfs. Yeah, I'll go with this one. This one. All right, that's it, for, except for the flagover stamps. Which I believe there's six varieties. So we're looking for red dates, blue dates, three coils, three booklets. Okay, today we're going to be soaking some 1996 stamps off, or at least ones that are dated 1996. There's about 25 designs released in 1996 of 30 and 32 different stamps. So we're just going to kind of go through what we got. We're going to do basically a dummy soak with some damaged stamps or ones that are just kind of dirty. Just kind of get a feel for what designs are going to soak off if there's going to be any problems. This one is the Red Date Coil uh, Flag of Report stamp. That's the 2915C. This one, I believe this is a 3133. Um, this one was released in 1997, but it has a 96 date. And it has like a faded blue color in the lower right. Um, but that's a blue date coil. This flag of a porch is a blue dated booklet. I think that makes it 2920D, the capital D. Then we've got another FOP here. This one's a red date booklet. I believe this is a 2921. And then we have two 2915As. And the top one has a... Right here, let me turn this light off. Hold on. Yeah, this is a 2915C, or A, I'm sorry, with a 99999 plate number coil. I got three of the four holiday dreams or family holiday. I'm going to try to soak less stamps this time than I did in the 95 one, just kind of give you an idea. Again, we're looking for the ones that are perforated on all four sides. And here's the, this is the kids ice skating ATM stamp, I think. I, uh, the guy's the return of the love stamp this is a 32 cent smaller it's got a tiny 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 date on it but this one has fake perfs around it whereas the other ones were square there's at least two blue jay stamps we're talk talking about today there's the coil and the booklet um the first two commemorative stamps that were released in self-adhesive form the tennessee and the iowa statehood is one of the first hanukkah stamps here's a madonna and child christmas stamp now i don't have extras to soak off of some of the steamboat stamps but i got two of them here we're gonna soak those two we got a yellow rose remember last week we had a pink rose and the week before that we had a red rose same design just different color uh petals um, i need to fix my rickety thing again there we go these are the stamps with the like play stamp here and tours that we're going to do last. Uh, last week we figured out that we could just spray them with pure citrus and that would get the adhesive to stick to the stamp, which we could scrape off. But then we would have that play stamp here ready to go. And then these are my garbage stamps. A couple of these are damaged. A couple are just cut really close. Um, and give me an idea. There's gonna be a love stamp. Um, this one has like a water activated gum stamp with it. Um, not all these are gonna end up in the garbage, but we're just kind of grabbing a not so great copy of a few different varieties of stamp. Just a couple of rose stamps here, um, a couple of blue jays. 
one of those family Christmas stamps and one of the Tennessee commemoratives. We're just going to do these ones first. I guess you can't really see all those. Just kind of test the waters, so to speak. I'm just going to throw these in here. Then I'm going to add some water and then we'll be on our way. I'm not going to rock up a lot of water in here. Just enough to cover the stamps, really. Give me some wiggle room. We'll let that sit for a couple minutes. So let's get to it. Uh, we're going to check and see if some of these are falling off yet. Like I said, the ones I threw in here are kind of, this one's coming off right away. Uh, although the glue is kind of sticking on there. I don't know if you can see that or not. Let's see if we can get that to kind of come off in one piece. Or two pieces. Or three. I guess the razor blade might have been better for this. There we go. Alright, so it's a little sticky. Maybe I should have left it in a little longer. I think we have more of the 96 stamps than we did of the 95 stamps. We were missing like eight of those. Um, this one came right off, no problems. So that's a good sign. Let's try one of these Blue Jay stamps. I think this one's been trimmed a little too close. Um, it's kind of hard to get some purchase on. There we go. That's cool. That's called what I call Void. It's a... Um, I'll go in my Taurus collection, the top, upper, right envelope statements. Um, but I don't think I have that shape of a blank square. Uh, this is one of the Christmas grandmas. That's kind of how I feel they should be called. This one's not popping off the corners just yet. Um, I'm going to leave that in a little bit longer. Now this Kestrel, yeah, came right off. See, this is the difference between when they self adhesive with, the, with the, just a thin layer of the water activated gum. That Kestrel just hopped right off. On this one, on the other hand, there we go. It's not too bad. You can see that glue on the, still outlined on the um, paper there. So the water is doing its job. I wish they kept that. Thin layer of water activated gum on stamps to modern day. That would be nice. Uh, this one has barely any paper on the back. I'm just going to try to separate that. This might have, someone might have tried to soak this one before. Just a little bit left on the corner there. Turned out pretty good. Anyway, here's one of the uh, traditional Christmas stamps. That just came right off. That was nice. Although, <laughs> dang it, this is a a water act. I mean, uh, yeah, this is a water activated gum stamp. That's why it came off so easy. Uh, a lot of these I I do have off paper already from the sorting portion of this video. Oh, that's not great. It's a little better. Got almost all of it still on there. Um, let's kind of use my thumbnail, I guess. There we go. You don't want to overdo it. All right. But those. State commemoratives seem to soak off okay. 
I do have a beef with the USPS putting these stamps out for Tennessee and the Iowa. These are all die cut, which means they could do any shape they want besides trying to make these look like they have perforations, like a traditional stamp. So you would think someone would have had the bright idea of having a state-shaped stamp. So those Tennessee stamps could have been in the shape of the state of Tennessee. And same with the Iowa, because you can make these whatever shape you want. Triangles, circles, bananas, people's heads. This one's got a lot of the adhesive stuck to the paper still. I'll leave that in the wire again. Sometimes you get a stamp and it's just not going to fully separate, which is unfortunate. I don't know if you can see that, but a good chunk of the paper of the stamp, yeah, it's tearing. This isn't working. That's pretty bad. But yeah, that's not really usable. This is my Desert Magic 2 uh, drying book by Shogard. This one's seen a lot of wear and tear. We're going to put these stamps in here. You always want to make sure you're on the nice smooth surface. Can't believe that wasn't a self-adhesive stamp. Okay, I'm going to go get some water. Close this up for right now. All right, and we're soaking a little bit less stamps than we did in 95 because um, I kind of decided unless it's a decent copy I want to save off paper, I'm not going to bother soaking more than I have to. So we have a lot of stamps to go through. So I'm just going to pick this thing up and kind of shake all these in here. It'll be interesting to see how this figure skating one holds up. All right, it's been a few minutes. Um, I don't see any of these really peeling off, but a lot of them are curling in the water on the paper. So I'm just going to start seeing if they want to come off yet. Yeah, this one's ready. Just wants to peel right off. The adhesives on the paper. It's perfect. Here's that 3133. A little worried about this one. But it seems to be doing all right. Good, because I need that one for my book. Again, you kind of just want to See if the corner will separate from this backing paper. There we go. And just try to pull on the paper side and not the stamp side. You don't want to hold it by the, the little fake perforations either. That's coming off pretty good. You can see the middle of the stamp doesn't look as wet as the sides, but Except for that little tag right there of the adhesive, uh, it seems like it's mostly coming off. He's got to kind of be gentle and apply constant pressure, and there you go. Yeah, see this one? This isn't good. This is doing what that last one did in our test run, where like the stamp is separating in different layers. Yeah, that is not good. We're going to leave that in the water. Any others from that set? Let's see if this will come off. Maybe they're, maybe they don't need a lot of water time. This was too long. That could be it. Or not long enough. Yeah, see, I don't know if you can see that, but it's definitely separating. So I would make a note. I have a couple here. I'm going to, I'm going to use the pure citrus on the next one. It's just a bummer because this one has herps around all the sides. So I'm just going to leave this one on paper and let it dry. And then we're going to try it with the citrus. Because I really want that stamp from the middle of the booklet in my album. Okay, so this one, Madonna and Child. This one came off better than those sh Shopping with Grandma stamps. Um, doesn't come off as easy as that flag over porch stamp did though. But just slow and steady wins the race. There's a little bit of glue still on there. A couple of spots. 
Um, see if I can get this corner to come up so I could go at it from both sides. There we go. Voila! And here's that love stamp. So if this gives us any trouble, we might stick it with those other two on paper. Um, it's kind of coming off on the sides. Okay. It's it's fighting back a little bit. It's kind of like catching a salmon versus a halibut. Trying to get more of that adhesive off. So now I'm just trying to roll off that 20% or so of the gum that's still on there. It just doesn't feel good. Still got just a little bit left on here. All right. I'm going to try another one of these steamboats. Nice. This comes right off. That blue jay came off nice and easy. Just turn this 90, 180 degrees or so. Yeah, see the Santa Claus stamp doesn't want to come off. I would say not to remove these with water. Whereas this Iowa stamp is coming off just nicely. Went to Iowa for the first time a couple years ago. It's very pretty. My daughter-in-law, some of her family lives there. We're coming down the Mississippi from Minnesota to St. Louis. Actually, this is at 3133. I don't know what the other one was. believe that might have been the last leg of a porch stamp to come out. Could be wrong. There's a couple more that are dated 1987 that we'll get to in the next episode. Is a booklet? Blue Jay stamp came right off. Okay, this one might cause me some trouble. This is that ATM. If it's anything like the last couple ATM stamps, they don't come off as easily. That corner doesn't want to come off. Huh? It's coming off pretty well. Just that corner is a little dinged up a little bit. Soaking self-adhesive stamps with water. Don't get too used to it. Here's another yellow rose. I'm just going to see if that corner will pop up. Did. I'm just going to very gently peel that. I'm seeing an outline of the stamp, so I don't know if that's the adhesive or if I'm taking a layer of paper off. It's not good. Oh, now it's tearing. Not good. Um, I'm going to let this one soak a little bit more. This is another 2915C. This one doesn't want to soak either. Um, yeah, we're going to dry this one. It's Hanukkah stamp though. Comes right off. Easy peasy. While I wait for that yellow stamp, I'm going to throw... These are all my place stamp here's to start soaking. This guy won't come off yet. Might be able, if I come from this angle, I might be able to keep that on there. There we go. That's not too bad. Get the drying book back out.
Yeah, I screwed up. I was gonna spray these. I was curious to see what was behind this guy though. Those cards can have some interesting things. Sometimes it's just a barcode. Sometimes it's a picture. This one says South Art Inc. A195. I don't have that one, so it works for me. I'm putting these face down, the tours, because they might have adhesive on them still. This, I guess I'm not keeping this in camera very well. This has another blank square underneath it. I like those. So, so this one is going to come right off. There we go. It's just going to peel right off. We're going to see any problems with this one because that first one is giving us some headaches. Well, oh. okay. This one just pulled my envelope statement right off the paper. Let's see if I can. Nope. So, yeah, I wouldn't recommend doing these 96 love stamps either. Stuck a little bit of the paper with it. Nope. I think I got that sheet of paper off. Maybe. Spoke too soon. Got most of it off. Able to kind of roll that off though a little bit. Um, and the stamp's totally dry now. So we're just going to close that up. We're going to let it dry for a day or two. And then we'll come back and we'll put these in our album. And then we'll be done with 96. Alright, so we're going to put that under some weight. Actually, I want to do one more thing. Take one of these guys that we're having problems with. I'm going to see if there's any love stamps in here as well. Yeah, so we're going to take these. And we're going to spray these with that citrus stuff. All right. Just going to let that soak in for a couple seconds. Going from the back. And now we're going to see if this peels off like a 2022 stamp. Mm. It's offering a lot of resistance. I'm going to spray it again, or just work that into there a little bit. Okay. Way better than what's happening with the water. Not super great still. Um, try to do this at an angle where you might be able to see a little bit better. So yeah, I've used Bestine on this one. I've used the Citrus Orange. I'm getting it off for the most part. This one's actually turning out better than I thought, although I did kind of tear a little bit of it at the beginning. Say that's a major fault on the back. That was quite the mess. Just trying to get two or three stamps off paper.
The gum is definitely a different color than last year's stamps. You can see that tear on the back. It is still a little sticky. I'm just going to throw it in the, in the uh, dry book like this and just see what happens. Um, I honestly don't have a lot of hope with that one or the two that I put talcum powder on, but we're going to leave those. Like I said, we'll... Oh, here's a third. Here's another one in the water. This is the thin. This is the one that I pulled the backing paper off of. I'm surprised it's as intact as it is. I'm going to put this under some weight and come back for it in a couple of days. All right, we're going to give these stamps uh, that we're having a hard time getting off paper. We're going to try four more things with these stamps to see if we can get them off before we give up for now. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to try some lighter fluid. Somebody said this works. Bought this at a tobacco shop for like three bucks. I mostly use this to look for watermarks, I think. But someone said that this will help get self adhesives off. So we're going to try that. Oh, where's my tongs? Probably not the best container for this, but I'm just going to let it soak it up for a second. All right, we're going to see if this comes off. Wow, it's not doing anything. We're going to leave that for a little bit more. The next thing we're going to try, we're going to try Goo Gone. It's supposed to get rid of gum and tar and grease and stickers. Uh, this might eat the stamp, so we'll see. I'm going to try kind of putting this on the front here. I actually have some gloves. I'm going to put those on real quick. All right, we're going to see if this comes off. So far, that's not having much of an effect at all. I'll let that sit for another minute. Go back to the lighter fluid. Lighter fluid usually dries up pretty quick. So I doubt this is going to have any improved effect. Well, I'm getting the Goo Gone stamp off a little bit. Slow and steady wins the race. So it's going to... It doesn't feel sticky. We're going to see if that damages the postmark, discolors the stamp or anything, but that might be a winner right there. Where am I going to put this? Um, the next thing we're going to try is Crud Cutter. It's a cleaner, degreaser, stain remover. Now I am using the same baby wipe I used with the other stuff, so it was kind of stupid. It might have a weird chemical reaction. Um, for fun, I might just put some on the front too. Come on, see if it's going to work. I feel like it's discoloring it already, but that could just be the, the liquid. But there's some stuff running off it, so I don't know if that's ink or the postmark ink or what. Um, but we're going to see if this separates. And it is. But not 
in a great way. The glue's kind of, I don't know if you can see that or not, but the glue's, maybe I should have left it on longer. It's definitely separated. Yeah, it's, I think it's eating the stamp. No, well, maybe not. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was a bust. So don't use cred cutter on stamps. Next, we're going to just use dish soap on the back of that stamp we just used the lighter fluid on. The lighter fluid probably evaporated already because people use it to test water marks all, all the time. It doesn't seem to damage the stamp at all. We're just going to put a drop of palm olive or two on the back of the stamp. And kind of rub that into the paper. I'm soaking in it, Madge. If you're over 50, you might get that joke. All right, let's see what we got here. Um, well, the stamp feels clean. Sorry if you can't see this very well. Well, the paper's falling apart. I'm going to add a little water. It did have some lighter fluid in it, but that shouldn't affect anything. And another drop just for fun. Paper definitely wants to fall apart. But yeah, it feels like this doesn't want to separate. That was a bust as well. Yeah, it's doing the same thing. The paper, the lower part of the stamp stain on the envelope. Oh, pff, can't even see. Sorry. But yeah, that's another thin stamp. And that one's just garbage. This is just the top layer. It's like the epidermis of your skin. That didn't work. I'm going to go tr get the goof off. I'll be right back. All right, so the next thing we're going to try is some goof off. This is Pro Strength Remover. There's a few different kinds of this product. I forget what the other ones are. But yeah, we're just going to try this and see if this has an effect at all on this last stamp we have. This is our last stamp to try. And then as we find more of these, we'll just keep trying different things. Unless that Goo Gone stamp um, worked out pretty well. There we go. This stuff is extremely flammable. The vapors can cause flash fires, so use with caution. It seems to be drying up pretty fast, so I'm going to see if it ate up the adhesive on there. All right, it is separating from the paper easily now it does feel sticky so the adhesive is still on there i'm just going to try to scrape this off a little bit with the razor blade hopefully that'll take some of the adhesive off That's really sticky. Yeah, the razor blade is not doing anything. I'm going to just try to roll it off. Doesn't seem to be doing much either. I mean, the stamp looks great. I'm going to put some more of that goof off on here. 
I mean, we accomplished our goal. We got it off the paper, but if I have to mount it on another piece of paper to put it in an album, that's kind of silly, right? So it's going to put a little bit more on there. And spread it on with the razor a little bit. And then just see if that helps the adhesive come off or not. Oh, yeah. Oh, should have removed that first. So I got a good amount of the adhesive off, um, and it doesn't seem to be sticking in anymore. Might be a little bit right here. There's just a little bit of goo still. Right in this corner here, so we're just gonna add a couple more drops. And we're just we're just kind of scrape it scraping it in this manner right here I'm doing it kind of from a top down I don't have a good camera angle I apologize but I can see some more adhesive just came off and it's not really sticky anymore um, let's just get that guy off of there Oops, I forgot I had adhesive on my finger. Um, this looks good. I think it ate some of the cancellation marks. But the colors seem fine. So I'm going to let this dry out for a second. And then I'm going to put it in with that Goo Gone stamp. But hopefully the Goo Gone or the Goof Off, we're going to see if either of those stamps turns out all right. But it seemed to have done the trick. I'm going to check on that that Goo Gone stamp, see if it's sticking to the, the drying page. And if it is, I'm going to do what I just did with that one where I let's see if it's not here or not. I think it is sticking a little bit. Yeah. Although it looks like it left some of the adhesive on the page there. But yeah, it does feel a little sticky. I don't know if the chemicals are different in Goo Gone and Goof Off, so I'm not going to mix the two. This one doesn't seem to have the greatest delivery system. I'll look for one that has a, a tinier applicator. Just want to get a little bit more on there. Alright, and then we're going to... Do what we did just now with the the goof off and use that to scrape the adhesive off if possible but if this doesn't work and the stamp's still sticky then i'd say goof off would be the best um, nuclear option for a stamp if you're having problems with it the six or so methods we tried um, another few things we could try is hot water uh, i do have a heat gun i'm gonna try one, that one of these days on some of these stamps it's a little bit sticky but not really so i'm gonna put that back on to the drying sheet here hopefully this is the right type of paper i don't but the goof off one feels a lot better but i think it did eat up some of the ink on the cancellation so I'm just going to press these under some books for a while and see how those turned out. That was more successful than I had expected. All right, so we're to the phase where we're going to put the stamps in our albums. This is for the stamps we found that have a 1996 date on. If you're about to buy a set of these, I'd recommend getting the six volume set three volume set i bought it's pretty pretty thick and the six volumes pretty much the same thing it just has smaller binders with less pages all right so the first page we're going to be doing is going to have 
four or five of those flag of report stamps we found. All right, so we're just going to put these in as we find them. 2915A is that coil stamp we had lots of. Let's grab a hinge. Just gonna drop that right in there. But we do have some 2915Cs, so we're gonna grab one of those. This one has 11 peaks on the left and 12 peaks on the right. And here's a blue date booklet so that says 96 on it. So we're going to grab that one. That is the 2920D. And this last one is going to be a red date booklet. So got one right here. And this is the 2921 Scott number. All right, so hopefully we'll find a couple more flag of report stamps in the future. All right, I believe this is a 2902B. It's gonna go there. That's the Butte nonprofit. All these bulk rate. I believe this is 2906. I think bulk rate doesn't exist anymore. I think it's been replaced by the pre-sort standard. Here's that eagle and shield bulk rate stamp. This is 2907. The other one's a tail fin. Resort first class. This is 2910. I think this 2912A, yeah, that's this guy right here. I believe this 3030 is this stamp right here. Unlike the uh, some of the other love stamps, this one has those die cut perforations on there. We did find one that was perforated on all four, or um, has die cuts on all four sides. But we do have the yellow, yellow rose stamp, the booklet, um, and then we have the coil. This is Scott number 3053. And I think this was the postcard rate in 1996. Okay, so here's where the Tennessee stamp's going to go. This is the first commemorative stamp that was put out in self-adhesive, and it's also in a gummed version. Okay, here's where the Iowa and the steamship stamps are going to go. So we have the Rebecca Everingham 
Bailey Gatzert, with the Far West, and the Robert E. Lee. We do not have the Sylvandale, so that's something to look for. And again, all I'm doing is I'm taking one of these little hinges, a hinge, just a little piece of glassine maybe. Um, it's got gum on one side. So it's like that small side right there. And I stick it on the back. I'm just going to stick the wet side on the back of the stamp right there. Like that. I'm going to press it down a little bit. And it's got a crease on there. Just fold that over. Can get that down nice and tight. And then you look at this side on the on the shiny part. Let's see if I can get there it goes. And then we'll press that in the book right here, like so. Alright, so we only need oops, we only need one stamp for this page. Okay, so here's, and this might be the only year where they have a Madonna and Child traditional Christmas stamp that's available both in self-adhesive and gummed formats. If you listened to our last episode, the post office wasn't going to put one of these out in 95 and people kind of protested. But you can see there, it's the same design. It's just available on a gummed and self-adhesive format, which is kind of a a theme for the mid 90s that they're going to release stamp designs in both formats to kind of give the stamp consumers the choice of whether they want self adhesives or gum stamps which led to the rapid death of the gum stamp from the usps it would be nice if they just did christmas and definitive stamps in self adhesive format and then left some of the other ones alone This one, if you watch the part where we were soaking these off, these were a little, a little tough. But we did get three of the four in versions that have those die cuts on all four sides. And here's the, the gummed version of these stamps. These ones are really tough to get off. It's just a placeholder, but it's got a couple tears and thin spots. All right, so this page is done. It's always exciting as a collector to have a page finished. Okay, so we do have two more stamps here. I think the Hanukkah stamp was only available in self adhesive. So here's that ATM stamp. Um, glad we had this. This was a little harder to find than the other ones. And we got Pretty much it for 96. We do have that one more flag of report stamp. But I believe, yes, this is the one we're looking for. This is blue 96 date flag of report Lionelus coil, and this is 3133. This was released in 97, but has a 96 date on it. And here's that Lionelus jukebox coil with the perforate with the perforations printed on the sides. Oops. But in the meantime, we're just going to put this last stamp of the day in here. This is a really nice copy. 
my opinion. Alright, so it's in there. And that's it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, please like and subscribe this to my channel. You know, comment below, all that stuff. And you can write me. My address is the Play Stamp Here Show, Post Office Box 921, Wind Falls, Idaho, 83303-0921. All right, so we're done with 96. It was a little surprised we had 27 out of 31. We we're missing one of the Flag Over Porch coils, the 2915B, I think. One of the, the non-profit stamps was, had a mountain on it. The Sylvandale river boat stamp and one of the linerless coils the jukebox with the printed perforations on it now i actually have a copy of that that jukebox stamp on this souvenir page they call these american commemoratives now i think but on the bottom there there's two copies of the linerless coil jukebox stamp with the printed on perforations now all a linerless coil means is they they only did this like three or four times. The, that flag over porch stamp, the 3133 on the other side of the paper there, that's another one of the liners coils. What they did, instead of having uh, a backing paper, like like there's a liner paper under these stamps, just imagine this is a coil and this just kept going and it had a bunch of, of that kind of plasticky liner paper on there. Uh, and then they would wrap that around to make a coil of a hundred or a thousand or five thousand or whatever. But instead for these liners coils, they, they coated the top of the stamps with a really thin layer of silicone and they just basically rolled the stamps around each other. So there was no liner paper. It was supposed to save the environment or something like that. The post office sold some dispensers like this one. Uh, I think they were like a dollar and you would put the, the coil of like a hundred leg over porch linerless coils onto this thing instead of the invisible tape. And then you would just, you know, peel one off as you go. There was recently an article in one of the stamp magazines talking about these liners coils that said, you know, 20 years after the fact, these things are starting to, to stick to each other. It's just becoming a big block of, of stamps. But anyway, that's what a liners coil is. On the jukebox stamp, they, they tried to make it look like it had regular perforations, like holes in the stamp, but these were just square shaped die cut stamps. This one happens to have a, a plate block number on it. And so does the flag over porch stamp as well. You kind of see under the, the postmark here, but that still leaves us at 27 out of 31. So if you add the 27 out of 31 to the 36 out of 46 that we were before, we are at um, 63 of 77 is the updated score for the number of stamps that we have so far in this series. And now we're at 81%, which is like a B minus, which is better than a C plus. And now we're at 2% of the 3,200 self-adhesive stamps at 63 instead of 36 where we were earlier. So our next album fill series will cover these 1997 stamps. If I remember correctly, there's only 21, 22 different stamps in 1997. So one of the only times instead of going up and up and up and up, it contracted a little bit before it starts going up and up and up and up again. But it, before we do that episode, I'd like to do a couple of shorter episodes. These ones are five or six hours of raw footage and then edited down to like an hour, hour and a half. It's a bit of work. So hopefully the next episode will be about just some stamp basics. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to call the series yet. Maybe stamp shorts, but it's going to be, the first one's going to be about the difference between gummed stamps and adhesive stamps. Cause we're talking a lot about those two right now. And then I might do one on perforations versus die cut, which is also something very relevant to what we're talking about with the self-adhesive stamps versus the traditional gummed stamps. So I might be putting those two episodes out before we get to the 1997 stamps. And then hopefully we'll keep streamlining this process and move on forward from there. So I hope to see you guys again soon. You know, making a five or 10 minute video should be a lot easier than making a 60 or 90 minute video. So I'll catch you guys on the flip side. All right, bye.